Hey everyone, and welcome to Focus Your Ads. In this episode, we're going to talk about Google Ads and we're going to dive into an account. I can't show you the account. I can't tell you specifics about the account, but we're going to walk through it and I'm going to show you different things that I'd be looking for as I go through this account. So it's going to be kind of like an over the shoulder view, but in podcast form. And I'm going to be explaining things as we go. All right, so let's dive into the account. So this one just started. We haven't been spending much and really the budget is under a thousand dollars. In this account, we have all shopping at the moment. Uh, we don't have any remarketing. We don't have anything else going on. No branded campaigns, no search campaigns at all. This is a purely a shopping campaign that we started and it's split into three different levels. We have the low, the medium and the high. So each level is going to be set up different. So in this case, because this client doesn't, the, the products that we're selling aren't necessarily brand specific. So we don't have the luxury of being able to target brand names, product names. So we have to find other search terms that are going to make sense. And we are going to target a little bit of brand that that's still going to happen, but it's, it's only, I'm only expecting to get a little bit of traffic from that. And then from the middle, this medium, I'm going to actually hand pick my search term. So it's going to be search terms that I see in the, in the high campaign, the catch all, I'm going to find search terms in there that I enjoy, that I like, and then I'm going to bring those search terms into the medium campaign. And hopefully we'll get a, a really good mix of a low, medium and high setup going on. And like I said, it's a brand new account. So we're going to be checking things, make sure it's all running the way it should be. So first thing I want to do when I go into a new account like this, I want to check and see, are we spending enough money for this client? So I'm going to look at that. So I usually pull up a 30 day period and I have the graph at the top. That's a line bar. And it tells me how much I was spending yesterday, how much I was spending the day before. So when I look at this client, uh, I'm looking at yesterday and we were actually underspending a little bit but then i go back to the day before and we were right on target the day before that was a little bit under and the day before that a little bit under and before that it was ramping up so to me i don't think i want to make any big adjustments to the amount we're spending as long as i don't see anything in the different tiers like and i call these tiers like the medium high and low campaigns you'll hear me refer to them as different tiers because i i see them as different levels in the funnel so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll go to yesterday's date now and I'm going to compare and see where we were spending, why we were underspending in on that date. So I'm looking to see in the, the catch all, the high campaign, and it looks like we're spending about the same in the high as we were in the medium. And the low campaign is actually spending the least amount. And like I explained before, this is expected because I'm not expecting to spend a lot in branded campaigns when it comes to this kind of business. I'm not expecting a lot to come from branded. So let's look and see if we can bring up search impression share. So in order to bring up search impression share in the most recent amount, you have to do the last three or four days. You can do a week and a week is probably a nice period to grab a search impression share. But if you want to get the most recent search impression share, it can be the last three or four. Um, I find it depends on when your account, what time zone your account's in and what, what time zone you're working in and uh, whether you can do three or four. So let's do that. And that's including today. So you can include today in that number. So in this campaign, I was able to do three. So I have only three days worth of data and that's allowing me to see the most recent search impression share. And this is something I would do for a new account. If it's a more experienced account, we've had more time running, I'd probably do just a full week. But in this case, I can see that we're at 80% search impression share. So that's pretty high. So we're at the higher end for search impression share. When it comes to the medium campaign, we're again at the 80% range. And those are my hand-picked terms that I'm using in there. So I'm bringing in different terms that I'm finding in the, the catch-all. And I'm bringing those into the medium campaign where I can now adjust the bids in there. But for overall spend, the medium is definitely spending the majority of the money. So it's it's good as long as my search terms are good. That's This is the way I would expect it to run and I would expect low my brand campaign to be really low. Now I also have the catch all which is running at about 34% search impression shares. So that's a lot lower than the other two which is good. That means things are working the way they should be. So I'm gonna look at the quality of search now and I'm gonna dive into my search terms. 
And I'll try to talk about it, but it's going to be a little more difficult because I can't say any of the search terms that I bring up. All right, so I'm in the, the branded campaign now, and I can I noticed that we're getting a lot of searches for brand, which is which is good. So it means our funnel is working the way it should be. I'm not seeing anything in there that's not brand specific. So it's all branded terms. Now it's it's mainly focused on one brand. So I'm suspecting that this brand either has a lower threshold for the, the cost per click that we can use, or there's just more search impression share available to us for that brand. And I suspect it's probably the latter. I, I suspect we're it's just a more popular brand than other brands and people are maybe searching for their brand name, which is good. It means that branded might actually pay off for us in this case, but we'll see. Okay, we're gonna flip over to the medium terms now. All right, so looking at the medium terms, we can see that they're very product descriptive. They're describing the product is what they're doing. They're not, they don't have the brand, they don't have a product name, but they're very descriptive of what kind of product we have. And I'm noticing that it's it's working. We're bringing in the right kind of traffic to be very descriptive with the type of products we're looking at. So let's look at the high now. So the high, as expected, is a little bit broader in what we're bringing in. So we're seeing a lot of different terms in here. Some of these terms are great, but we're also seeing a lot of terms that are are not so not so great. So let's take a look through. I'm going to go through some of these, and then I'll talk about it quick here. So one thing as I'm going through here that I notice um, that could be helpful for you is the fact that I get other languages involved here. And a lot of times the search terms are still good. There's nothing wrong with these search terms. However, these search terms are in another language. So they could be in French, they could be in Spanish. So what you can do if you don't understand the other language, you can actually put this into Google and then type translate after it. And it's going to bring up Google's Translator. This is the easiest way that I've found to actually look at these search terms because some of them are great search terms. So I wouldn't go ahead and exclude them all just because they're in a different language. I would go and look at these search terms and make sure that they make sense. And I've found that a lot of times they do make a lot of sense for the brand. So keep that in mind. Another one that comes up here is more of an action item. So for example, you could have people asking about how to do something or DIY something and this might be more of a service-based business and right now I'm working on a product-based business so it doesn't make sense to have someone that's maybe they're looking for someone to like for example they want someone to install the the heater in your house maybe you sell the heaters but you don't actually sell the you know the service to, to install them and that's something that you're um, you don't sell so having someone search for how to install the heater or I need someone to install the heater, um, different things like that doesn't make sense for your brand. Just keep that in mind as you're looking through these. And when I do find them, I'm adding them as a negative keyword and I'm putting them into a negative keyword list that's attached to all my campaigns. So this is part of my setup. I always have a negative keyword list called something like exclude from everything and that's attached to all my campaigns. This way I know that for sure there's no way around it that keyword is not getting through to any of my campaigns, as long as that's what I want. And then as I do this, I'm actually changing, I'll, I'll add this negative keyword once. So I add that in, and then I'll come back to it again. And let's say I had like, uh, for example, how to install a toilet, but I don't actually sell instructions and I don't have anyone that, I don't have any blog posts that talk about how to install a toilet. We have to know now how to get rid of that. So there's a few different ways for one, I add it as a negative keyword as exact match. That's what the brackets, square brackets around it. And that's what comes up as soon as you add it as a negative keyword. When you're looking through search terms, that's the first one that comes up. So I'll do that, I'll save it. And then I'll go back in. So I'm gonna do that with you here. So I'm saving that right now. It's not the same search term, but I'm saving the search term that I have. And then what I'm gonna do is go add a as a negative keyword again. I'm gonna change it to my negative keyword list again and ensure it's on the right negative keyword list. Then I'm going to go down to where it has the keyword and I'm going to change this instead of having the square brackets around it. Now I want to t get rid of the square brackets. And um, in this case, let's go back to our toilet example. So how to install a toilet. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to actually add in how to in quotes. That could be if you want to get rid of anything to do with how to, that would be one way to do it. Or another way to do this would be to have install as a broad match. 
If you do install and don't put quotes around it, don't put brackets around it, that'll be broad match. Then anytime anyone looks up how to install, install anything to do with install, that would be removed. It won't remove installing, but maybe that's another one you want to add. And maybe you, this kind of snowballs a little bit and you go and add quite a few different versions of this. Just be careful when using broad match because if you negative the wrong thing out, for example, you negative toilet out as a broad match, if you sell toilets, you will never show up for the term toilet again. So keep that in mind. And if you start noticing that you're not showing up for certain terms, you may want to go look for that in your negative keywords. So something else you'll see come up quite often when you're working in a, an e-commerce store is you'll you'll start seeing big box brands that are selling the same products or similar products to you. And this might be Costco, Home Depot. It could be um, Walmart. Any of these big box stores can show up in your search term. So it's kind of a judgment call whether you want to keep those or not. You have to keep in mind that someone searching for that is probably looking to buy that product, but obviously they want to buy it from that 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 dealer. So it, it, it might be something to test, maybe leave it for a while, and then go back and analyze it later and see, are they searching for Walmart? Are they searching for this? And did I get a purchase from any of those? Or did I get an add to cart, a checkout? Just stuff to keep in mind. Okay, so I've went through my search terms now and I think I've found the ones that I want to eliminate. So I've went through, eliminated some, ensured that I'm not going to, I've also added some broad match to ensure I don't have to just continuously get the same search terms over and over again. And I think we now have a pretty good optimization for this. So I did this over about the last seven days and now our search terms are, they're looking pretty clean. And in the next seven days, I'll be watching this again to ensure that we still have clean search terms. I'm also going to be going through other things in this campaign, but I'll do that off air. So this is just a little bit of an insight into what I would be doing. So one other thing I should mention about going through search terms, uh, when you're looking through your search terms, you have to watch for, for, if you're using like this type of setup, you're using a high, a medium and a low setup, you want to watch for terms that you want to move up or down the funnel, I should say. So for example, when I'm looking through the high funnel, I'm looking for terms that don't belong in the high funnel. So if they're really descriptive terms, I'm watching for those and those will be moved into the medium campaign. Or if I see some brand campaign or brand terms, and a lot of times you'll see this, if you have a misspelling of that brand, that might need to be moved into the low. So you have to look for different misspellings in order to correct the setup that you have. That's, that's one other thing I would be watching for while doing this. Going back to all my campaigns here, I'm looking at the metrics again, and one of the metri metric I never really mentioned to you guys yet is click-through rate or CTR. So click-through rate is the number of clicks you have divided by the number of impressions that are shown for that ad. So if you had five clicks and a thousand impressions, your click-through rate would be 0.5%. So in this case, so a click-through rate can mean a lot of different things, and I wouldn't use this again as your only metric. You can't just look at one metric and say, this is how well my account's doing. If I improve this, I improve my account. That's not true. You have to look at this combined with everything else. And this, this account doesn't have return on ad spend yet. There's no sales that are associated to this. It's a brand new account. So we're looking at this. Now I can look at click-through rate and I can see that my medium, we're getting over a 1% click-through rate, which in the world of shopping isn't too bad. When it comes to search, that's on the low end. Uh, when it comes to my high campaign, we're looking at a click-through rate that's a 0 0.30, around a 0 0.30. So that's a lot lower, which in my mind, if I my high funnel is getting a lower click-through rate, that's a good thing. That means I'm picking the right terms. People are interested in that ad. The people that I'm targeting with my, my search terms, so I pick handpick my search terms for medium, those search terms are the right search terms for the, the person that's searching because they're clicking through more often than the people that Google is picking for them. So if it went the other way around, I might be concerned that I'm picking the wrong terms. Maybe there's something else happening. Maybe there's another reason for it, but it might be an indication that you have the wrong search terms targeted. And for example, my branded is 0.4. So that's better than the catch-all 
but it's not a whole lot better. So I'd be concerned that maybe people are only searching for branded to actually find the brand and not find someone selling that product. And that might be the case. And this is why I'm not concerned about it being a little bit lower spend. Whereas my medium is my, I think is going to be my number one campaign because it has a higher click through rate. So what I'm looking at makes sense and people are clicking through more often than my other campaigns. So even then branded. So I think we're picking the right kind of search terms for this account. So overall, I think this is all we're going to go into on this account right now. It's it's a new account. I wanted to go over a few things, clean up my search terms, and make sure that everything's running the way it should be. And now that I know it's running the way it should be, I'm going to check on this again in the near future. Uh, well, I check on my accounts almost every day, but I will be checking on this one and diving deep into it again in the near future. So hope this makes sense to you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode where we're kind of just walking through an account. Obviously, I can't share any details with you, but uh, I can kind of walk you through and talk about some of the concepts, some of the thought process that I put into these campaigns and where, what I would do with these campaigns and what I'm thinking when I'm going through them. Um, in this campaign, this account, again, another thing that it would be on my mind, and it is on my mind right now, is creating a display remarketing campaign. So that's something I'd want to implement into this campaign, but I don't think our audience is going to be quite at that level yet. Being that this is brand new, we're probably just on the border of where we can actually utilize a display remarketing campaign. So that's something I'd be looking at, as well as I'd be interested to ensure that I'm I'm remarketing within my shopping campaigns. And to do that, you can actually layer on an audience and then we can increase the bids for those. But that's something that we can talk about later down the road. There's, those are pretty much um, entire podcast episodes that we'd go into that. So hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next episode. Take care. Bye.